All right, good evening, and uh, welcome to the uh, 29th meeting of the 13th uh, Elected Council of Santa Happy Valley Goose Bay. Uh, we don't have any uh, proclamations or anything, so we'll move right into a meeting. I'll ask for a uh, motion to adopt the agenda as presented. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wallace, seconded by Councillor Brumfield. <laughs> My head's going this way. Uh, all those in favor, indicate oh. aye. 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 Okay, motion passed. Delegations, we don't have any delegations um, in house or on phone, all right. We'll move into, we have two sets of minutes uh, to adopt. Uh, first, the 27th uh, council meeting on November the 22nd. Um, they've been included in the package, so um, I'd ask for a uh, mover. Move those minutes that we accept them as presented. Moved by Councillor Broomfield, seconded by. Uh, Councillor Rumbold, discussion. All right, none being heard. We'll uh, vote. Uh, all those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contrary minded. All right, we've accepted the minutes from the 27th meeting and also the 28th meeting that was held on November 29th. I ask for a mover for the minutes to accept the minutes to as they're presented. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wallace, seconded by Councillor Broomfield. Discussion on those minutes? Councilor Rumfield. Yeah, I would just like to mention one thing on our budget prep. And, uh, people had to remember that our budget is also based on the previous year's budgets and audits, really. So we had to make some adjustments or do some uh, guessing, I guess, if you want lack of a better word. And we're based on the previous budget because we're not up to date on our current budget or audits, I mean. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor uh, Brumfield. Uh, anybody further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of accepting the minutes as presented, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? Accepted the minutes. Correspondence. A bit. Uh, okay, we have a uh, letter from Minister Abbott. And I've always, I'm always cognizant of the microphone here, so I'm moving it closer. Uh, Minister Abbott, and um, uh, do you want me to read it or? Yes. That was outgoing. Sorry. Outgoing, for, okay. Outgoing, outgoing yeah. correspondence, sorry. So we have written uh, the uh, minister, I can speak to this one. We've written the minister uh, to indicate that uh, we've been overwhelmed with the inquiries about the potential location of any. Uh, overflow for the housing hub and uh, we've indicated our dissatisfaction that uh, any such establishment uh, be, a, uh, be uh, I guess housed in a residential setting and that uh, we want uh, as a council to be more engaged in terms of uh, discussions any discussions in that regard so that was sent out on December 2nd after uh, some uh, uh, concerns and uh, voices of concern were expressed to uh, myself and other councillors all right, so that's the no correspondence. Okay, so we're going to CPD. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll pass the floor to the Chair of Community Planning and Development. Which is me. Which is you. Yeah. Yep. Okay, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this month we did not have no meetings with the Community Planning and Development, and there was no reports because there was no one who submitted any applications to review for any land or business applications or land, that kind of issue. So there was no reports and no meeting for the month of December. But we're hoping to pick it up and get back into the normal swing of things in January of 2023 for the new year. <clears throat> okay, thank you for that update. So I won't consider that as a report as there was no meeting, so uh, an update. Any further discussion in terms of community <coughs> planning and development? All right, we'll move into community services and recreation. Thank you very much. Same for uh, CSR committee. We did not meet uh, this month as a committee. Um, we were no short of activities in the, in the uh, month, of course, for CSR. But as far as a report, there's no recommendations and uh, no report. Okay, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Wallace. And yes, uh, things are busy, uh, for sure, in that, uh, in that department. All right, let's move into finance, administration, and policy. Councilor Rumble. Thank you, Mayor. The Finance and Men and Policy Committee met on uh, December the 9th at uh, 12 o'clock. 
Present were myself as chair, Deputy Mayor Ella Wallace, Councillor Todd Winters, CAO Nadine McCauley, DFO Mike Dalmont, SAT Kelsey Campania, HR Kellyanne Jack, EA Kathy Eddy, and CD Greg Osmond. Um, our meeting was called to order at 12.04, and um, we had a condensed meeting as well, so um, we did meet, but we didn't have a full um, agenda. So we um, had a brief review of previous minutes and no errors or omissions were noted. Uh, we discussed a couple of items that we needed to get taken care of, housekeeping items. So we had the remote attendance policy um, that was brought to us by municipalities, Newfoundland and Labrador, for our review um, to, as, a, as a reminder to all municipalities to update um, their own municipal policies. Um, we had some status updates on brief status updates on um, ongoing issues that we will be returning to in January. For new business, we had some donation requests that came in and that we reviewed, so those will follow in my recommendations. Um, we didn't do our manager's reports, again, because we had a, a brief meeting. Um, we did do a, um, I did update the committee on um, some information with the regards to the YMCA, to the Central Labrador YMCA, just to relay information back to the committee. And uh, we were able to adjourn our meeting at 12.59, and our next meeting is scheduled for January the 17th at uh, 4.30 p.m. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Rumbold. So it's uh, moved by Councillor Rumbold that we accept the Finance and Minimum Policy Committee report as presented, seconded by Councillor Winters, discussion. Councillor Rumpel. There's not a discussion. I'd like to point out because this is the same thing we've been doing with all of our committee meetings. And some of us, most of us did training now um, this past weekend on the uh, code of conduct, the mandatory training we had to do. And I think we've been doing our committee meetings wrong because all along we've been told that if you have four people in a committee meeting, then you've got a quorum. So. With our mayor sitting in his actual official, that's four people. And yep, but it's, just it's as a, to uh, yep. But in actual fact, the mayor has no vote on. Yeah, committee. there's not a vote, meeting, not a vote so anywhere, right? Considering still, considering that we've been in yeah. training, we we did the training on Saturday, yeah. And the adjustment uh, committee discussion will take place next week. Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, I did ask the uh, the CAO to uh, have a conversation with uh, Municipal Affairs just to see, and the other thing is that if we have a policy in place, and uh, yeah, so you're absolutely, uh, you could be correct, but uh, until we get that direction. Mm -hmm. But again, there's only three voting members on committee for recommendations. Councillor uh, Winters, just a second, did you no, have No, I just say, and like, as far as I'm, far, from my understanding, uh, an ex officio is not a voting member, so it's not really considered part of that committee. Yeah. Yep, Councillor Rumble. Uh, Mayor, just in relation to my report specifically, and, and I know that um, what Councillor Brumfield has said is in general for all reports, yep. but um, I did not note in my report that you were absent because of that specific reason. So um, where you were not required, you could have sat in as ex officio, and then I would have had to have said um, that you were absent from the meeting, but because um, you weren't in attendance, but you weren't required to be there, you're not noted as absent in the line in okay. the report. Thank you. And if we return back to now our point of discussion in terms of this particular uh, uh, motion, any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor of the uh, Finance and Minute Policy Committee report as presented indicate with aye. 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 Contraminded. Motion is passed. All right. Uh, municipal services. Uh, again. Yours, sir. Is your recommendation? Floor is yours. No, just a report. There's, there's no report from your committee, right? Okay. <coughs> no. Oh, oh, oh I am sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Recommendations from yes. Finance and Admin. There we go. Just a couple. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Floor is yours, Council Rumble. Okay. The Finance Admin and Policy Committee recommends that Council approve a cash donation, a cash contribution, sorry, of $2,500 to the Salvation Army for the Christmas Kettle Campaign. Okay, it's moved by Finance and Min through Council Rumble that we approve a cash donation of $2,500 to the Salvation Army for the uh, Christmas Kettle Campaign. 
Moved by her, seconded by Councillor Winters. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? Motion is passed. Next recommendation, please. Okay. Donation request, Memorial Golf Tournament. The Finance Admin and Policy Committee recommends that Council approve paying registration fees in the amount of $400 for the two teams that participated in the Memorial Golf Tournament on September the 15th, 2022. All right, it's moved uh, by Councilor Rumbolt uh, for Finance Admin that we approve uh, the registration amount that was paid of $400 uh, to the Memorial Golf Tournament on September 15th, 2022. Seconded by? Councillor Winters. Discussion? Councillor Winters. Normally when we make these kinds of donations and donation requests, usually we make them before the event. This one here is like three months after the event and we're approving it. So you have- We shouldn't be doing that. That should have been done before the, uh, the event even took place. Any further discussion? I'm pretty sure that we did discuss it. I don't, I'm not sure where it ended up because I know yeah. it was discussed at a previous meeting um, because when before the tournament come up, I remember the CAO mentioning that it was done on an annual basis anyway because the money is, is, is basically the memorial golf tournament, uh, the golf tournament is the Wayne Winters Moose Memorial Golf Tournament for law enforcement. And from my understanding, that funding goes directly to the scholarship in, in my late brother's name. So I th I'm pretty sure that this was discussed. I'm not sure where so it got. So why is it here? Yeah, I'm not sure. So where direct, it was I'll direct, direct a question to CAO. Is this something that would have to come before council or each year? Uh, yes, it went through committee, but it somehow got missed from committee to council. Okay. Okay. So seeing okay. as yep. the check was done and issued to them, we thought it prudent to make, Proof. you know, yep. check all our balances, okay. make sure that it's all right yeah. and to bring it to council. Yeah, I, I do remember it being yeah. discussed. I remember it being discussed too, yeah. to be honest. But yeah. And I remember it being approved, so. Further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the uh, the motion to approve the $400, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? Motion is passed. Next recommendation. Thank you. Donation request to Ronald McDonald House. The Finance Admin and Policy Committee recommends Council approve a donation of $500 to the Ronald McDonald Socket for Sick Kids Charity. Okay, moved uh, by the FAP Committee through Councillor Rumbolt that we approve $500 donation to Ronald McDonald Socket for Sick Kids Charity. Seconded by Councillor Brumfield. Discussion? And I, go ahead. With this one, is that the same situation? Or is this an annual? So this is our uh, same situation where we gave a check for the amount and now we're asking for approval? Has the check been? <coughs> no, this happened in November. The Socket for Sick Kids Day happened yes. in November. Yeah. And council did issue a challenge to another municipality yep. uh, for this. Yeah. But now <coughs> the approval this just approves the, the money. Yeah. is coming to council. Yeah. So we did challenge Labrador City. Never did see anything from the no. town of Labrador City and my friend, the mayor. Uh, I know we did uh, have some socks and pictures and things like that, so it was, uh, it was good. And I, uh, I understand they accepted our challenge, so uh, <laughs> that's good. All right, further discussion? All those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? Motion is passed. Next recommendation, please. The Finance Admin and Policy Committee recommends Council approve a cash contribution of $3,000 to Ground Search and Rescue to assist the team with their communication expenses. Moved by uh, the Finance Admin and Policy Committee through Council Rumbolt, a cash donation of $3,000 sorry, to uh, GSAR to assist them with their communications expenses. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Wallace. Discussion? All those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded, motion is passed. Okay, the next, next one. Yep. The Finance Admin and Policy Committee recommends Council approve a cash contribution of $1,000 to the Libra House. Okay, it's moved by uh, Finance and Admin through Councillor Rumbold that uh, we approve a $1,000 donation to Libra House. Uh, seconded by Councillor Winters. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? 
Motion is passed. Next recommendation, please. The Finance, Admin, and Policy Committee recommends Council approve a cash contribution of $1,000 to the Lake Melville Ministerial Association. <clears throat> Again, moved by uh, Finance, Admin, and Policy through Council Rumbold that we approve a cash donation of $1,000 to the Lake Melville Ministerial Association. Seconded by Councillor Winters. Any discussion? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, well, he had his hand. I saw him first. So That's okay, I, I think yeah. this is for uh, the Roland Tears uh, food contribution. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, That's okay. what you guys were going to say, I guess, sir. Exactly. No, oh, no, sorry. No. Okay. <laughs> Councilor Brumfield? Yeah. Uh, just wondering, like, all of these together total 10500 We got this in our budget, I presume. Well, I'm assuming this is why we're doing it at this point, yeah. but I'll ask that question. <laughs> That's correct? correct? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Any further discussion? Um, all those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded. Motion is passed. Uh, next one, please. The Finance, Admin, and Policy Committee recommends Council approve a cash contribution of $1,000 to the Helping Hands Committee, um, which it doesn't specify, but the Helping Hands Committee at our long term, local long term okay. care facility. All right. That's. Uh, been uh, moved by Finance and Minister Council Rumbold. We approve a thousand dollar donation to Helping Hands at the long term care facility. Uh, that group uh, seconded by Councillor Brumfield. Uh, discussion? All those in favor indicate with aye. 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 <laughs> Contra minded? Motion is passed. Next one recommendation, please. The Finance, Admin, and Policy Committee recommends Council approve a cash contribution of $600 to the Kids Eat Smart program. All right, it's moved through the FAP Committee, through Council Rumbold, that we uh, approve a donation of $600 to the Kids Eat Smart program. <laughs> okay, I'm getting... Sorry, <laughs> just for yeah. clarification, yes. that is for a specific school, or QPS? Okay, so uh, it's for... Yep, so please add in uh, $600 to the Kids Eat Smart program for Queen of Peace Middle School. Thank you. Uh, seconded by okay, Deputy Mayor Wallace. Uh, discussion? All those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? Motion is passed. Next recommendation, please. The Finance, Admin, and Policy Committee recommends Council approve a cash contribution of $550 to the Labrador Friendship Center Food Bank. Recommended through FAP, uh, sorry, by FAP through Council Rumbo that we approve a cash donation of $550 to the Labrador Friendship Center uh, Food Bank. Seconded by Councillor uh, Brumfield. Uh, discussion? All those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? <coughs> Motion is passed. Next recommendation, please. Rapid housing program. The Finance, Admin, and Policy Committee recommends Council accept the funding approved for the Town of Happy Valley Goose Bay by Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation under the Rapid Housing Initiative 3, RHI 3, City Stream, and sign a contract to proceed with the implementation of a housing initiative for the Town of Happy Valley Goose Bay that will provide new housing units that will be ready for occupancy by November 2024. Okay, it's moved uh, by the Finance and Amin uh, Policy Committee uh, through Council Rumble that we accept a funding approved uh, by uh, CMHC under the RHI initiative and sign a contract to proceed with the implementation of housing initiative for our town. Seconded by? <laughs> I, I, saw, I saw the red first, yeah. so I'll go with Deputy Mayor Wallace. Uh, discussion. Councilor Rumble. Thank you, Mayor. Just wanted to give a little bit more information in the discussion. So um, just so that everybody knows, this is something the Rapid Housing Initiative was applied for um, by our municipality more than once. Um, unfortunately, our original applications were not approved. So our Community Planning and Development Officer came to our last FAP meeting and um, was very pleased to let us know that there has been a new stream. So the um, RHI3 city stream 
which um, the town of Happy Valley Goose Bay was considered as a, um, a successful candidate on. So this is something that unfortunately right now, due to um, the nature of the awarding of the funding, we're not able to give a lot of specifics. Um, so in this meeting, what we're doing is we are recommending that council accept the funding approved, um, but just to let everybody know that this will be followed with when, when we are able to <coughs> do an announcement with specific details that will be released to the community. Um, so we're just, right now we're saying that we will accept the funds um, with positive and um, much more detail to follow um, as soon as we have the ability to release that information. I know there's been a lot of work done by uh, the MP on the file and um, it is RHI 3 and it took us three times I guess uh, to, uh, to get it but we've been included with uh, major cities which is a good news uh, announcement. Uh, so one of, I think it's 41 communities, uh, municipalities, mostly large cities. So uh, it's good news for us. So um, by doing this uh, process tonight, uh, because we would have to accept it in a public forum, a uh, public council meeting, uh, it won't hold up any uh, further uh, dealings and announcements and that kind of stuff. So really good news and uh, a lot of good work. And thank you to our development officer and to the staff. Uh, because it's uh, it's good news. We we'll look forward to future uh, future announcements. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor of uh, the motion as it was presented, indicate with aye. 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 Contrary minded. <coughs> motion is passed. I just have one final recommendation, please. Yes. So my last recommendation <coughs> is in regards to A0037, Councillor's attendance of meetings by electronic means. The Finance, Admin and Policy Committee recommends Council approve a revised policy A0037 as presented in the Council's package. All right, it's moved by Finance and Admin that we now accept uh, A0037, which demanded uh, um, attendance of meetings by electronic means, I guess geared towards remote uh, remote functioning. So, uh, move through Councillor Rumbold, seconded by uh, Councillor Winters. Discussion? You guys is awful talky to me. Councillor Rumbold. Okay, I just wanted to give a little bit more background uh, information on this one, Mayor. So, just so that everybody <coughs> knows, um, the municipalities Newfoundland and Labrador has recently updated and provided us with more information um, in regards to remote attendance. They've also recommended that each municipality make sure that they have a clear and concise um, policy in place for the attendance of meetings by electronic means. So with respect to A0037, this was originally developed and signed in 2014 by um, the 11th Council. So it's since been eight years later and there was just some um, additional specifics that um, we added to. So. Um, the policy, I think, has gone from six or seven bullet points to ten. Um, and it's just something that we make sure that um, there's some clarity there. Uh, just in the, like, for example, there's um, more details so that when our executive assistant is preparing the minutes that she can note if somebody, if a connection is lost um, during an electronic uh, or remote attendance, that that counselor would have deemed to have vacated the meeting. So it's just, it's all in the interest of clarity um, and just so that everybody realizes um, even though this is a policy, like every other policy that's written um, so that we have a guideline, it is um, also noted that every policy has to be flexible and, and in the um, remote attendance and electronic attendance uh, vein, we've all just gone through COVID where we've all learned Zoom was never anything that any of us understood before. So between Zoom and Teams and, and Skype, we've all learned um, that there are other ways to do business. So we have a policy in place, but we've noted several times that exceptions can be considered. We want to be as flexible as possible while still having a guideline in place. So this is just to tweak it and bring it up to 2022 standards. Thank you, Councillor Rumpel. Councillor Brumfield. Okay, what I'd like to mention about this, I don't know if anyone... 
good people's memories are. About two months ago, an MP in Ottawa attended the, the House of Commons via this here multimedia. He was in the washroom. We shouldn't, we got to have basically some rules that say you can't be calling in from a public washroom, something like that. I really don't think, I don't think you should be calling if you're in a hospital, for example, either. It, there should be rules that you don't call in if you're in a certain place or if you're ill. Really, right? That's my take on it. Well, uh, as, uh, as someone who worked, uh, I guess, the last couple of years of, of COVID uh, with, the, uh, with the feds, um, you know, I mean, we've run the world virtually. Uh, we have to be flexible. Uh, we have to understand that uh, people, uh, you know, uh, from time to time can't physically be in a meeting, but could be sitting in, uh, you know, uh, a hotel room or some other uh, space uh, and take a, a meeting. I think some of the conversation in the recent training that uh, we underwent, uh, the remote policy thing was more geared towards workers that were in rotational working situations that had got on council but got a job and worked away. So I think that's why some of the discussion around tightening up the uh, policy or having a look at the, the policy. But I mean, you know, it's, it's like anything else. Um, the decorum and, and, and the way you handle yourself in a meeting, whether you're in a public setting or you're in a, on a telephone call, I wouldn't, you know, uh, I, I would trust the people, you know, who wouldn't be flushing the toilet or wouldn't be doing whatever. So I think that, uh, you know, that's a, a thing to dictate how meetings or how you must, you know, attend meetings or how, what you must do or where you must be and that kinds of stuff, uh, I think is, uh, is, is something that, uh, you know, may require further conversation. But uh, I think we've, uh, we've tweaked the policy. Uh, it works. And I think, you know, uh, the policy, once they're accepted, how long is it before they will be online? Within a day or two, okay. So yeah, so all the policies are, are available on our uh, on our website. Sometimes a little difficult to find the exact one you want, but um, we're working on that as well. Any further discussion on the motion? All right, none being heard. Uh, I'll go to a vote. Uh, all those in favor of accepting the new A0037, indicate with aye. 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 Contrary minded. We've accepted the uh, recommendation. And that is all of my recommendations. Thank you, Mayor. All right, then. No problem. Thank you. Okay, we move into municipal services. Thank you, Mayor. As with all committees except for finance, administration, and policy, there was no December meeting held, so there is no report to be given. Thank you, uh, Councillor uh, Winters. And... Uh, all right, so no recommendations then, obviously. All right, we move into our last committee, which is uh, public safety and protection, I guess. Uh, thanks. The Deputy Protective Mayor. Services Protective uh, Committee Service. did not meet again, or did not meet in the month of December, and therefore no recommendations and nothing to report. All right. So, um, Protective Services, all right. So we move into the next item, which is approval of checks. Oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, just before we move on to the approval yep. of checks. I would just like to note that although there were no uh, meetings of committees, that the manager's reports were still provided to the councillors sitting on the committees. Work has not stopped. The uh, updates were provided as reports. There were just no action items to bring forward to uh, council meeting this evening, with the exception of FAPC. Yes, and, that, and also to note, I mean, the amount of email traffic that goes through and day-to-day -day kind of stuff, uh, work doesn't stop for sure. Thank you for uh, bringing that to... Uh, to, uh, to us, uh, Ms. McCauley. All right, so move of the checks. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, okay, through finance admin and policy, um, I would like to recommend that we approve checks in the amount of $872,529.31. And these are checks from the period of December, sorry, November the 28th, 2022 to December the 13th, 2022. Okay, so it's been moved uh, by Council Rumble. We accept checks in the amount of $872,529.31. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Wallace. Discussion. Okay, none being heard. All those in favor, indicate what aye. 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 Contra-minded? 
Motion is passed. <coughs> Councillor's form. I'll go to Councillor Rumble tonight with her Christmas sweater on. I just finished all kinds of talking and now I get to <laughs> <laughs> So this time, this time, you know, I'm going to keep it brief. Um, I just, like everybody else, our minds are on the season ahead of us and the new year um, yet to come. So um, on behalf of myself and my family, and I know everybody around the table is going to echo the same, we wish every resident, uh, everybody in the town of Happy Valley Goose Bay, a very happy and safe holiday season. Um, we've had some wonderful displays um, throughout the community from everything from our tree lighting, our Santa Claus parade, um, and I know uh, Deputy Mayor with her community services and recreation is anxious to highlight those. So I just want to say that it's been a pleasure to take part in any of these holiday season events, uh, reminding everybody to keep those less fortunate first and foremost. Uh, to always remember that the happiest season of the year is not the happiest time of the year for everybody. So um, we want to embrace everybody in our community, um, take care of each other, and with every new year and every new beginning, it brings um, the excitement of the unknown. And uh, the one thing that we do know is that 2023 is going to be our 50th anniversary. Um, so we're looking forward to a lot of exciting things happening here at the town of Happy Valley Goose Bay. We'll have two new councillors joining us. So a lot of newness, a lot of excitement, and a lot of good things yet to come. Uh, congratulations to everybody around this table on a year of hard work. Um, what did you say today? This is our 29th meeting. So we have seen a whole lot of each other and this building and the staff and the staff have been wonderful and taken such good care of us. And um, we look forward to embracing 2023 and all the great things that it can bring. That is it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Rumble. Councillor Winters. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to say good luck to the four people uh, coming up in the next by-election. I uh, wish you all the best. Um, as this is year end, um, I'd like to thank all the staff and all the workers and all the management that make this town run. Um, it, it, is, uh, it is a joint effort between everybody and it is uh, a massive thing to be doing and I think, they, I think you go, all go above and beyond what you do and uh, thank you for your service over the past year. And lastly is uh, for everybody in the Valley Goose Bay, all the residents to have a happy and safe holiday season. Thank you, sir. Councilor Brumfield. Thank you, Your Worship. I endorse everything that uh, Councilor Rumbert and Councilor Win Winters had just said. I'd like to mention that um, with this by-election, normally by-elections are uh, pretty slow in terms of getting people to turn up and vote. I encourage everyone to get out and vote just for the by-election. I'd like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And during the festive season, I'd like to ensure that everyone drives safely. No drinking and driving, please. And like I said, Happy New Year. Happy New Year and a Merry Christmas. And thank you. Thank you, sir. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Um, although we had no committee meeting as such specifically for CSR, that month was so busy. There's so much happening. So I would like to give a huge, huge shout out to the staff, not only in CSR, but the entire staff at the town. Each and every one of you, honestly, went above and beyond and made it a real magic, um, the magic happen, especially on Saturday with the Santa Claus Parade. Uh, people came out in droves. It was wonderful to see, and uh, Santa came back to visit again, the kids in the, in the college, which was lovely. Um, getting back to normal is what we were before, so it's, it really is nice to see. Um, Hockey games in the arenas were happening, the Steve Rainey, the Men's Senior League. Um, there seems to always be something happening in town, which is great. So again, thank you to the town, especially for, for the staff, for all your help over, um, over the year, but especially in December. Um, and Merry Christmas to everyone and happy holidays. 2023 be a good one. Ooh. Where's the time gone, right? Uh, just a couple of uh, things. Um, just want to uh, send a, just a general reminder right about our social media policy and uh, you know I guess all of us are on social media as personal people uh, but uh, we uh, you know there is a policy in place that we don't conduct a business 
of the town per se in uh, on social media platforms and uh, I uh, recently f followed uh, another previous counselor and uh, playing around on the TikTok platform so uh, it uh, yeah it's not the platform and and you know we we do it for fun from ourselves perspective but we've chose not to uh, not to because of our policy to conduct business so if you have questions uh, by all means route them through our, our phone lines uh, route them through uh, if I'm asked directly I will encourage folks to call in and speak with a staff member uh, but uh, that's just a just general reminder um, I'd like to welcome a bunch of new employees to the town uh, our uh, HR department's been really busy um, we've got uh, I think in speaking with the CAO this evening there's only one position was that correct that we don't have filled and will be filled very shortly, hopefully. hopefully. Mm -hmm. So just one position in the entire town, and I don't know when the last time that that, uh, that, that was. Uh, so uh, excellent work by a lot of folks, uh, a lot of interviews and a lot of placements and stuff, which is, uh, which is great. Um, I did receive a lot of feedback about um, when you talk about the Christmas parade uh, from folks who have, um, have family members and friends in the long-term care. And um, the one email that I did get from uh, a lady whose uh, who's family member is here was very heartfelt. And um, it would have been very nice, actually, to be in the long-term care, uh, their sunroom over there, because it was, uh, it was really nice. So that, uh, that was good. I uh, did have the opportunity to say hello to the mayor of Chicago. And uh, that was an experience. So that was, uh, it was good. Um, counselors now are undergoing uh, mandatory training. Uh, so this past... Uh, uh, some of the councillors have done it. Um, Councillor Brumfield and I and the Deputy Mayor did ours um, on Saturday. And uh, it's a full day uh, of, of mandatory training. And it deals with uh, things along uh, new lines of the um, Code of Conduct and the Municipal uh, Code of Conduct uh, for Municipal Officers. Uh, and as well, we have created our own Code of Conduct from a council perspective and just general runnings, which is, uh, which is good. Uh, we've welcomed some new Ukrainian uh, families to our uh, to our community, which is uh, wonderful, especially at this time of the year, to be able to uh, spread our our community, uh, 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 I guess, presence to uh, to others who uh, who may be struggling is is wonderful to see, and it's great coverage. Um, I also would like to uh, just say, like, you know, everywhere you turn, and now people are raising money for everything. And just the uh, the generosity within our community is is absolutely crazy for eight thousand people. Um, just a special shout out: the Salvation Army is uh, there with their kettles as well. So uh, again, in lines of trying to help uh, folks that uh, uh, are helping folks within our community, that's uh, that's always great. Uh, from my family to everybody, uh, wish you all, all a Merry Christmas. Uh, the amount of work in the last year has been absolutely crazy. Um, the number of emails I. I don't hesitate. I'd like to count them one of these days if I have time. Uh, but the amount of interaction between uh, between us as a group, and uh, we lost two of our members, but we'll gain two new members of our team uh, shortly. Uh, so we look forward to that. Uh, staff, uh, I won't say any more than what the other councillors have said. You guys are amazing. Um, you know, I hope uh, Christmas is good to uh, to everybody. Um, but uh, you know, just keep in mind if you can reach out to someone, uh, whether it be you know neighbor. Uh, a senior somewhere who may be living alone through the Christmas season, uh, do that uh, for sure. But Merry Christmas to uh, to everybody, and I guess we'll see everybody back in uh, 2023. And I, uh, yeah, I, I just want to uh, do another pitch for the 50th. It will be our 50th uh, year of incorporation. Uh, so uh, it, uh, by the sounds of the plans that have been made by the committee, um, I think we're in for a really good year. And of course, on top of that, we have winter games coming up. So yeah, next year will be a, uh, a fantastic year. So with that, do you have anything to bring before the council before I proceed to close? Season's greetings to everyone. And same to you. Thank you for what you do. Anybody else? We're good? All right, so I will entertain, although we never talked about it at the training, <laughs> I'll entertain yeah. a, a motion to adjourn the meeting. Moved by Council Winters, seconded by? Just in case we need to have a second, <laughs> Deputy Mayor Wallace. Merry Christmas.